Brothers, in this video, thought it'd be fun to do kind of a film room. This is one of the best MCS games we've probably seen of all time. Uh, this is a winning get-in game. This is Dubby versus Skimbo. This is on Dubby's Twitch. I'll put a link to uh, both of their Twitches down in the description below. Uh, Skimbo is probably, I think, my favorite MCS player of all time. I just really like the way that he plays the game, the way that he sees the game. Uh, I think he does a really good job of kind of simplifying the game, but also still being able to be good at the highest level. But at the, going into this game, uh, W made a live event, I want to say in Madden 24, and Skimbo has not made a live event since Madden 20. So um, kind of uh, going to be running dollar, uh, Skimbo going to be running dollar. I feel like Skimbo, for the most part, uh, is kind of the guy that put Dollar on the map this year as far as pressure goes. Uh, Fancy certainly the guy that really... I think mastered and really exposed how good uh, the double safety walk down and the switch sticking out a dollar is. Uh, Skimbo is the guy every year that has probably one of the glitchiest blitzes in the game. Uh, Skimbo's defensive philosophy is essentially to always have some type of send four, send five, send six pressure scheme. In Madden 23, he was really good at the loop blitz. Uh, Madden 22, I want to say he was running two, four, five odd. Man 24. Uh, last year he was running. Uh, he was running this dollar, but he was also using a lot more DB fire last year. And this year he's kind of running a combination of dollar and uh, a combination of dollar FS zone blitz on the right hash and edge blitz three on the left hash. Now, uh, one of the tendencies here, and this is one of the things that a lot of people talk about. So I just want to kind of get into the basic philosophy here. So it, the basic philosophy of dollar this year is a send four blitz okay uh now when the ball is on this left hash typically the send four is going to be like this and then the coverage behind it one of the beauties of dollar is truly the coverage now let's just imagine the ball was over here if the ball was on the right hash every single time you're almost always going to see them run a four man like this okay now Behind it, the coverage behind the blitz is obviously a lot, always, I think, more important than the blitz itself. Well, the blitz itself is really important. Um, the coverage is really what changes. Why I personally love Dollar this year is just because it is one of those things where it's everything always looks the same. If you think about it, you have these safeties that are walked down every single time. Um, the coverage, you, you really don't know what they're going to do. There's so many things you can do from your coverage from Dollar. It's why I personally believe that Dollar is always going to be, at the very least, a top five defense in the game because you can do so much from a coverage perspective. If you could stop the run out of Dollar and you could find pressure out of Dollar, the coverage is always there, okay? So anyways, all that to say, what is the base coverage that you're going to see a lot of people run? Uh, typically, this guy is going to be in some type of soft squat, cloud flat type of coverage. This guy is going to be in a half. This guy is going to roll to the middle of the field and be on third. This guy is going to be a third, and then we're going to have flat and a vert hook. That's one of the base coverages that you're going to see a lot of people run. The reason why is because this soft squat is really good at defending stemmed corners. And then the other thing that you're going to see, another really big advantage to bring these safeties into the box, which we have seen people bring their safeties into the box since Madden 23, Madden 23, Madden 24, Madden 25. This has been a consistent theme. Get your safeties into the box because – they are going to do a better job at playing this seam streak, okay? Uh, one of the tendencies, how, or, and then one of the other coverages that you're going to see is kind of a straight-up cover four almost, where these guys are all going to drop in deep zones. This guy's flat, flat. Uh, this guy will be blitzing, and then this guy will be in a zone or vice versa, right? But essentially, one of these guys is going to be blitzing. One of these guys is going to be a user, Okay. Now, situationally, what Skimbo typically does, and he's done this for a really long time, on key situations, these fourth and shorts and, and that kind of stuff, you typically will see um, kind of a cover two style defense. Why? Well, because we're trying to basically just take away really this 10-yard area of the field, and then because he always has a really good blitz, this is a pretty good strategy. In this year's game, these deep halves really fan out really well um, for corner routes, but it does leave you susceptible to seam streaks. So I believe Dubby is in Colts. I'm not 100% sure of that. I know Skimbo's in Bears, which I'm super excited to talk about his offense. I personally think Skimbo might be a better off uh, defensive player than offensive player, though. I feel like every year he has one of the best defenses in the game. 
And it's honestly a very simple way to play defense, but he just always seems to get good, you know, get stops against good players. And there you see Dubby gets on the board early with a seam streak up over the top. So let's get into uh, Dubby's defense. Dubby is going to be running something a little bit different. Dubby is going to be in, I want to say he's in 3 3 Cub, and he's going to be running a little bit differently than I would run it. And he is going to be utilizing man a lot of man coverage uh, within this. So, so yeah, he's going to be in 3 3 Cub, probably in multiple defensive playbooks, so he could still have dollar. And I believe also 3-4 odd. Skimbo's going to be in Bears. And Debbie's kind of setting up this 3-3 Cubs. So what his goal is and what he's wanting to do here, let me just kind of explain this so you kind of get the core concept of what we're doing defensively. He's got a spread, a spread D-line look, and he can send five. Typically, this guy on the right side, the guy opposite running back side will come in typically. Okay, so if Skimbo gets into this whole idea of we're going to send five out, he can scream at him pretty easily. Now, um, but the main reason why you would run 3-3 three, three Cub, and, and, and I think this is what you're going to see W do a lot of, is it's really good in man coverage against most, most meta offenses because Cub just gives you a really good alignment. Here we see he does have a D-line D ability, whatever that is, probably double or nothing on Gastino, I think. Um, anyway, so Skimbo is in Bears, which is the best bunch strong in the game. And uh, let's go ahead and get into what's going on. So here, Dubby's actually going to bluff a little bit early and kind of have a little bit of a man a hybrid man zone look that he's going to go to. Shoots the run well early. It's a second and long. And we're probably going to get into some of this man coverage. Let's just take a look here. Yeah, we do get man, man, man. And then we have this random hard flat. Why the hard flat? Probably mainly for a tight end drag. Um, if Skimbo consistently sends the running back out, Dubby can just send five. So I think that's kind of the chess match is like, is he sending the running back out? If he's not sending the running back out, then you don't have to cover him. So Dubby's pretty much committed to never really covering this guy. And then you're going to see another thing he's going to do is he's going to try to user press the tight end and basically try to take him out with his user. And then you see the two deep halves. Now, why are they doing deep halves instead of middle thirds this year? Mainly for this curl route. If you stem a curl route all the way up at this point in the year, it's going to be able to beat man really well. So those are some of the kind of justifications, reasoning. Also, the send four. Notice what he's doing here. I think this is a slant outside, but it's kind of a weird angle on this D lineman. But essentially, you see here, you get, you're trying to kind of loop off of this edge. So anyway, that's kind of what he's doing defensively. Let's go ahead and get into this. And here we see sends the running back out, but that hard flat does guard it. We have man, man, and then the user is on this tight end. I think this is a corner route to the outside. One of the best man beating plays in the game is Y curl or uh, Y trail. Another thing you see a lot in this defense is they shed a lot, but you'll see Skimbo. Um, is got a receiver and he's going to be able to high point this. I th Skimbo high points a lot. I don't know if he high pointed that, but I know Skimbo high points a lot. He's high pointed a lot um, this year and in Madden 23 as well. So kind of see what we have here. Uh, also to get here, Skimbo beat Tamir and Tamir was in the last live event and then uh, W beat W beat Abram first round, and I don't know who all they played the rest of the time, but the, I think the marquee wins. So marquee wins both these guys had coming into this game was W was able to beat um, Abram, and then Tamir and Abram made the first two events, and then um, Skimba was able to beat Tamir, who made the last one. Now right here, this is kind of a good little deal here. So, again, you're running shaded down. Man, the whole purpose of the deep halves is to take away this because you see if you get this animation right here, the receiver is going to get on top of him, and you could, there's a whole shot right here. So this is taken away by this deep half defender. Okay, that's why you put the deep halves there. Well, Dubby is going to switch stick on to this wrist, this corner to try to take away this post. So you'll see here, watch this read from Skimbo. This is actually a really good read. He actually throws it before he even switches. Maybe he just knows. Maybe this deep half always bites on this post route. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, but you see there, W switches, and then this is basically left un, uncontested touchdown. A great read by Skimbo. 
and then something that happens next that absolutely changes everything about this game. Uh, Skimbo gets ball at halftime, which is already a significant advantage here. W is going to run this out with DK. Skimbo times a hit stick, I'm pretty sure. Able to get a fumble. This is a huge, huge deal in the game because Skimbo now has the ability to go up 14-7, to seven, and he's going to be able to get ball at halftime which is going to almost kind of guarantee him a, uh, at least a one, maybe a two possession lead um, kind of coming out of half. So this is a, that was a huge, huge, huge play uh, for Skimbo. Now it looks like here Dubby's kind of wrestling with, do I go to dollar or do I stay in cub? He's going to choose to stay in cub. And again, this is primarily going to be man to man. Now he got the, I think the, he did actually go through and put the outside thirds on the field. So he's going to start using the outside thirds and you see nice sheds, good pressure, and able to kind of pu push the pocket, force the pocket, and play really, really good defense in that regard. All right, so uh, second down and 10. Again, kind of key situation here. Skimbo's going to go to a really cool uh, – not cool, but just a, a, a combo that you're seeing a lot more people do. Um, so what has Dubby been doing consistently, right? Dubby has been setting his defense up and then walking his user over to the tight end. Typically what this means is he's going to man up on here and then he's going to have these guys fanning out and potentially one guy on these uh, as an underneath flat route. What Skimbo does by recognizing this is he's going to come out and flood and he's just going to put the tight end on a streak. This is a combo that a lot of people like primarily for zone, um, but he's actually going to use this as a man beating concept because the as the user is coming, he's going to snap and he's going to just have a quick high point and uh, have potential. So you'll see right here, it sets the defense up. He can't get a jam on him, high points it, and touchdown. And that's a huge touchdown. Like that, that's a huge, huge touchdown. If you get a field goal there, you're you're not in as good of a position for sure. And primarily just because now you go up for one full possession and you are able to now – you can you can take a field goal going into halftime because you know you're going to get ball out of half. It's just a huge huge momentum swing and a big big shift in this game early, only a couple minutes into the game, but a huge fumble and this kind of changes if you will kind of the layout of the game because Skimbo now not only gets ball at halftime but he's also playing with a lead, and so it kind of changes how he's able to. Uh, how Dubby has to, how Dubby's going to play offensively in regard to that. Obviously, Dubby just needs to go down the score, but there's a lot more pressure on Dubby because Skimbo gets ball at half and is playing with the lead. So it's a big kind of shift in the momentum of the game early on. All right, so here, right hash. Again, I talked about this a, a little bit ago, but this defense is best on the right hash because this blitz is really good. Typically behind this, you're going to have the user on a little hook curl here, and then you could be doing one of really two or three things. The first thing you could do is kind of a, a cover three based defense, which a lot of people like to do with their hook curls on five. Um, another thing you could do is a half, a, a soft squatter cloud, a vert hook, and kind of roll this direction. Um, that's another thing that you could do as well. So we'll kind of see what Skimbo ends up doing. But um, Dubby's going to go to an actual combo here. He's going to – notice his pass pro here. Uh, Dubby is half sliding to the left. Um, I'm pretty sure half slide to the left. He is picking this blitz up. So Dubby, one of the people that we really haven't seen great pass protection for this Skimbo blitz. And Dubby, one of the first people that I've seen that has – pretty consistent uh, protection against this now what does this now one little side note what does this half slide because that's what he's doing he's full or i think he might have full slid the first time but a full slide or a half slide if it goes this direction all right what's that mean everybody's taking the steps over here so what does that open up it opens up this blitz right here so we'll see if skimbo uses that throughout this game because he does have that in his arsenal. Here, a little quick hike at a curl flat. Looks like Skimbo's going to a cover four-ish base defensive shell. Good completion from Dubby. And one of the things that I think uh, Skimbo does a really good job of is he keeps the game in front of him. He makes you, um, for lack of a better word, he forces the offense to work. Now, Dubby is going to go to bunch wide here and just going to go to an inside zone, kind of test Skimbo's run D. I feel like Dollar is just really good run D this year. I just feel like they shed really well. It's hard to run any kind of shotgun run against Dollar. Obviously, some under center stuff could be potentially effective. 
but in general, this is what I would, you know, th- this is um, a pretty decent little shotgun run D. Here, W goes to something that I think he w- he did against Abram um, in the Gulag. He goes with a little one-on-one aggressive catch, trying to kind of get a rocket catch animation. It's another advantage to Dollar. This is hard, and you, you really can't throw that until the corner turns his hips. Because Skimbo's corners are backed off, it's a significant advantage uh, for him to be able to defend things like that as well. So, again, just kind of keeps everything in front of you and makes the offense work. There's I, I want to say that's a soft squad over there because of the way that it broke on the out route. But – We'll kind of see uh, if Debbie goes back to that hour out. Fourth and three, this is a huge uh, down in the game. Again, I want to just take note a little bit of what Skimbo is going to do defensively. Debbie going to set up some pass pro because he is on the right hash. So you're going to see, and he's he's blocked this blitz every time. Um, every time I've seen, and then, oh, my gosh, on a fourth down, all of a sudden the pass protection no longer super good. Let's just take a little look at what – Skimbo does again. This is a it looks like a half slide to me. Um, and then he's ID in here, so the idea would I mean, you would just think that would that would work, right? Look at where Skimbo's users at. This is another big tip. A lot of these dollar guys, um, especially Skimbo, and I'm sure that Skimbo's probably the first one doing this, that's typically how it works. Um, and then it kind of filters out from there. But what you're going to see here is that he moves his user out of the gap. So if you're standing down here, um, it seems like this is easier to pick up than if you get your user completely out of the play. So Skimbo moves his user all the way out, which we haven't seen this be really good since Madden 22, uh, when I believe it was Edge Blitz 2, uh, Edge Blitz 3 out of Dime 236 Sam, I want to say, uh, was really good. So anyway... You're going to see this uh, this here, and he's completely out of the play with his user. Now, the coverage that Skimbo uh, often runs in these situations is that super underneath coverage. And then I would assume uh, that if he does need to, he'll switch stick onto one of these guys to go take a corner right away. So we'll kind of see what, what this all looks like. I don't know what Dubby's going to run here. Yeah, so you see, I mean, look at this. Just screams right in. Really nice. This underneath yellow is going to take this type running back for long enough. You got a vert hook here. Notice what Skimbo did. He switched off of the three rex. So the three rex coming down to play this Texas route. Guess what Skimbo can now do? He can go take this corner. So Dubby has to make kind of a, a snap read. He throws this running back route, that three rec and vert hook combination, play it really well. And Skimbo's got a turnover. And now a lot has changed. Right, a lot has changed about this game. Able to get that stop right there puts him in position to to be in a really really good spot uh, it, because again he gets ball at halftime, which is so big. It's such a big um, swing to get that ball at halftime. It's why you should always be kicking if you win the toss. Um, here's some kind of a quick snap, kind of almost like a, a broke to a degree, a little bit of a broken play there. Hit the running back on a quick hike. Skim, we're going to do some motion out. Another thing that beats this Shade Down Man is these wheels. Uh, these wheels can get over the top of Shade Down Man this year. There you see that hard flat adjustment again from Dubby doing, doing really good for him defensively as well. And here we go. We're going to get our first send five. You see you get that pressure off the edge. Unfortunately for Dubby, Kyle Pitts is open. And I want to take a look at that. I don't think he shaded down. Um, this is um, – yeah, he might have shaded down. Just a tight end streak against Shade Down Man. Hard to cover. I think W was probably where he wanted the user himself. Not able to get there. 21-7 to with ball at half is a big, big um, – now Skimbo's really got a stretch, really got a lead here. And so W's going to – he's W's going to have to score, get a stop, you know, or hold a three and then score again. So – the urgency and the the clock, right? The urgency is certainly coming uh, coming into focus here as to how it's going to affect Dubby. And you see here, this slide protection for the most part works really good, especially when you block a running back. And gets out there with a drag route for about tw- a really nice gain on that drag. Running a lot, he runs a lot of bench pivot with about fifteen corner routes. He's got an out route, a corner, and a tight end corner. I've never seen that combo. At least, like, ran a ton. 
and um, W Skimbo have a site, madturf.com. I'm sure that's where they uh, or that's where their ebooks are. If you want to check out kind of their breakdowns of their stuff. Here we're going to go to trips. Um, so this is an audible that's hard for dollar to guard. The reason why um, this is where this is an audible that's challenging for dollar. It's not you're still pretty much in a decent spot. But if this guy goes on his own, this guy goes on his own, this guy goes on his own, and this guy blitzes, there's a lot of space kind of in this area of the field. OK, so here you see a seam streak. We have a little underneath route. And then we have this kind of tight end post coming over the top. So Dubby is really trying, if you look at this, he's going to attack this kind of section of the field. Okay? So we'll see how this goes for him. He is sending five out, and he is confident in his pass protection. And Skimbo almost screams. I'll tell you the other thing. That's a nice switch stick from Skimbo. Um, just a little bit, just a little bit late on that. When that blitz comes in, because it comes in so much, sometimes you can, like, get a little spooked. And there, there's edge blitz. And we've seen good quality pressure from edge blitz. Uh, and edge blitz is one of the reasons why I love dollars schematically is because if you try to stop one blitz, you normally open yourself up to the other blitz, other blitzes in the formation. Little double post combo. Uh, I did want to take notice of this third and five here. Uh, you'll see Skimbo do something defensively that I do think is worth at least talk, uh, touching on and just kind of noting uh, something that I think is really good. So he goes to a different defensive look. Now he's on the right hash. I personally would, would probably still just run your basic send four. Uh, but you're going to see here Skimbo is going to send three. He's going to spy this guy. And then this is what's really, really, really interesting. Um, he, this is something that I want to say Mr. I don't remember who was the first person doing this. But this was something that people did uh, last year, and I'll show it to you uh, once we get once we get the once we get the playoff here. It's an interesting combo from W looking probably for the C route in the back corner. Well, let's just uh, get it to a point. Hopefully, snap the ball. Okay. So he doesn't send. Uh, he doesn't send everybody. He only sends three, which is not a great way to get sheds. You're not going to shed as well as if you send four. Okay, but notice why? Why a spy? Right? Why a spy? A couple reasons. Um, the spy is going to do a really good job of taking like this end route for a second, uh, really, really underneath coverage. And if you know anything about Madden 25, trying to send the flat zone or the vert hooks is really not very good in this game, okay? It, it should be much, much more responsive than it is. But oftentimes you can just scramble out and run right at this hard flat and they won't guard you. Now, speaking of the hard flat, he puts these outside corners who are backed off, right? They're backed off. They're starting there. He drops them in hard flats. So this is shaded underneath. Hook curls, I'm pretty sure they're on five and shaded underneath, but not 100% sure. But anyway, the yellows, um, and then the, the spy. And then what we have here is we have these curl flats. Pretty sure these are stock curl flats. Their main job is to take away this back corner area of the field. So if you were to look at this, what's open? Well, this is wide open, right? Um, and so this is where the user kind of has to defend this back middle area because that is very open on this defensive coverage. You see the way that Dubby runs the combo, this is the only thing he really has to use her. So kind of a big down and, and, and not a great play for that down in that down and distance in that space. And Skimbo able to get a stop. And this hold to three is big. So he holds to three. And now he has, look at this clock. This is so important. He has a really good position now. So you see a little RPO. You're going to start to see Skimbo offensively is going to be a little bit more measured in what he's going to – his approach. Two minutes, 45 seconds, and if he gets three, he's going to go into half up 14 with ball out of half. Potentially could make it a 17 or 21-point ball game, and all he has to do is get a field goal on this drive and make sure that Dubby doesn't get the ball back before half. So you're going to see – a lot of clock management here. I do think this is the best strategic way to use this time. 
is um, is to just mainly try to get three, but make sure that Dubby doesn't get this ball back. So there's a great run, and Dubby did ultimately shift into Dollar. You notice that he has shifted into Dollar defensively, kind of out of that main strategy. He's going to go to this Dollar defense in an effort to try to get a stop, able to get a good stop on the run. And now we bring up a second and 12 situation. Got that deep half on the right side, motion in. We'll, we'll drag there. Quick read. A little trail. Good read for that post. It's a really, really good throw. Uh, third and five. Able to get that first down. And now, you know, again, 50 seconds. Dubby's got one timeout. Here, Dubby's going to send a, a more of a standard DB fire, too. Uh, Skimbo goes with a QB sweep. I'm sure he was on conservative, so he in, uh, decreases his fumble chance there. Um, because obviously, you know, you know, running with your quarterback is always risky. And we got, uh, let's see, second and 12. And a little edge blitz. He actually sends the slot. Gets the sack. And I think Skimbo tried to kind of quick hike him and just didn't have a, a great combo out there. And Dubby's able to kind of defend it. With fairly basic, uh, basic defense, so double safety, right hash. So we should be seeing this guy blitz. Let's see if Skimbo has protection for his own blitz. All right. Yeah, he's kind of doing the same thing with the slide. That time he got a screamer from that guy, and now you get a fourth and fifteen, no timeout, and now you're going to go into halftime. But honestly, this certainly couldn't have worked out any better for Skimbo. He's going to go into half twenty-four to ten. And he gets ball out of halftime. It's it's a, it's a super big difference. If this is seventeen to ten, um, it's a lot different feel than twenty four to ten, right? Still tough to come back from, but a lot easier to come back from seventeen to ten than twenty four to ten when they get ball out of half. So right here, you know, even if Skimbo like really Dubby needs like a full stop, he needs a pick, he needs a fumble, he needs a full stop. If he because situationally, right, we've only got about ten minutes left in this game, and and Skimbo, if he if Skimbo gets three, he's a th it's a three possession game at that point. So just kind of running out of possessions, which is also why kind of the purposeful play calling of Skimbo Skimbo uh, using the inside zones, using the run to be able to strategically kind of work this clock a little bit. Got his user crossman on the outside. There's that vertical's wheel. That that throw has been Skimbo's throw since Madden. I want to say Madden 16. I know it was his throw in Madden 17. He's ran that route literally for almost a decade. And um, he, you know, one of the reasons why such a big Skimbo fan is uh, I do think Skimbo. You know, I think if everybody was just kind of saying it as it is, Skimbo is really the reason for Bunch being what it is. Um, he was the first one that was basically running bunch every single play, at least that I can remember. And he always had kind of unique route combos out of bunch, always found something that people really didn't find. And, um, you know, has always just been kind of one of those guys. So always has a glitchy blitz on defense, always has uh, a really good route combo that you might not see everybody run, typically can bomb every coverage. So just a – Obviously, just one of the best Madden minds of all time, one of the best Madden players of all time. I think, you know, I, I don't know how you have him out of your top five all time. I think I think Mary make an argument that he's, you know, top three. So I, I would I would say top three is pretty safe. Uh, the only person I would put over Skimbo is probably Henry. Um, I don't know if I have anybody else over him just because of the of the era of the MCS era. And here we see a little running back direct snap against Dollar, and look at that. That's 15 yards. That's actually – I talked about that play as well in the Bears uh, Bears offense on school. That was a really good run. Uh, this wide trips out of Bears is very underrated. It's a real quick audible out of bunch. It has a bunch of kind of good red zone gimmicky plays, situational plays uh, like that where you can kind of just cheat for – not cheat, but like – you know, kind of get a cheap five, ten yards on a run or an RPO. You have that in Bears. Uh, it's one of the things that I think makes Bears better this year than it was last year. Uh, obviously, it doesn't have tight slots anymore, but it does have – I want to say it has tight open. Pretty much every playbook has tight open this year. And that did not work. That time the running back direct snap did not work. Third and 12, got to have a dot. 
goes to a quick snap of flood, takes a sack. But look at the underrated thing that Skimbo was able to do in that drive, and you'll see here he'll take this to the quarter. He was able to take the entire third quarter, and so now Dubby's going to be getting the ball back. 17-point deficit, five minutes left. That was masterful game management by Skimbo. Skimbo managed this game really well, especially on the offensive side ball. Obviously gets the fumble, um, but managed the game flawlessly second half. I mean, you know, going into half, to, he just made it so that Dubby, he really has um, – Dubby has not really had a, a great chance to get back into the game. Um, just by virtue of how Skimbo has called his plays offensively, and manage the game. You know, it's Gimbo throwing a D-line pick, got a fumble. You know, there's so many things. But ultimately, you know, Skimbo playing really good. And there Dubby hits that drag. And I'm sure Skimbo defensively is pretty much calling adjustments, calling coverages that are designed. This is what Dollar does well. Keep everything in front of you. Make them throw the ball in the middle of the field so that it has to take as much time as possible. Now, in Madden 24, I will say, or Madden 25, I will say, if there was a Madden where you can get back into the game, it's this one because the runoff is so bad, uh, so big of a deal, so big of an issue. That was a really nice switch stick right there. Let's just break this down a little bit. This one, one of Skimbo's seems like his strategies against trips is this is a quarter. This is a third, I want to say. And I think it's just a straight up cover four. This could be a deep half and a cloud. Um, but the thing I want to say here is he's going to switch stick onto this quarter, and then this guy will drop over the middle of the field to take the in route. So switch stick onto this, take this. This will be wide open for a touchdown. So you'll see here, it's just a really – see, like right here, see the switch stick? That's open for a touchdown. But it's a really hard read to make, and you're under pressure. But notice how that three rack dropped down to take that. But this seems to be one of Dubby's things. So I bet you what Dubby's going to eventually do is he's going to try to throw it no matter what. So he's going to go back to trips, kind of seeing the same thing here. And you'll see what he does. He goes to verticals. Probably looking for this triangle. And you see he kind of almost had it there. It's just a hard read to make. Ends up with a rough intentional grounding penalty. Now we're in a third and 20. And this is where I think I think Skimbo's his best on third and fourth down. He really he really changes things up on third and fourth downs where he starts to, you know, kind of be a little bit more aggressive. And I think this is gonna be a cover two, but he's gonna protect the sticks. Watch this outside cloud flat. See how that cloud flat's gonna go back to the sticks. And again, this is also why I think Skimbo is such a big believer in having consistent pressure, uh, because when he has the ability to have consistent pressure, it forces you to be on a timer. And W takes three here, and I'm kind of interested as to why. You know, I, I think I think that's probably. I mean, you're gonna need 17 points no matter what. But I do think you probably. I don't know. I guess if you go for that and you don't get it, you basically lose the game right there. I feel like kicking three with the way his defense has been playing and no onside. I mean, I know you can't really onside. You Again, for W to get back in this game, he literally does. I guess this isn't a, it's not a terrible decision. For him to get back in the game, he needs a full-fledged stop, and this is probably his best chance to get this. And so that's probably the purpose of that. Because he needs a full-fledged stop and an onside kick or two. Uh, you know, he, he needs a lot of – Needs a lot to be able to get back in this game, but ultimately it's two touchdowns. So if he gets one stop, if he's able to actually force Skimbo to have to pass the ball and get a stop and a score, he could be in potential. Skimbo's doing a really good job, just not forcing anything, taking what the defense gives him. Takes the check down there. Cover four. Cover four sends three. No blitzed user. It's a run. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I think he was trying to click onto him and then like instantly hit stick him to try to get a fumble. And in the process of that, I think he just ends up really hurting himself defensively. And now Skimbo again in this situation, 17 points is kind of a golden, 
rule, if you will, if you're up 17, that's normally a pretty comfortable lead. So you're going to see Skimbo do something pretty strategic here. Notice Dubby called his first time out. He's just going to take this all the way down and kick three. He's not going to force it. Um, he's not going to try to score a touchdown. Situationally, he keeps that three possession lead and he forces Dubby to burn all his timeouts. So now Dubby is, you know, ultimately really needs two onside kicks, which is, you know, hard, hard for that to happen in Madden. And he still needs to be able to score. And Dubby's only scoring, Dubby hasn't scored a touchdown since his first drive of the game. Um, so. So I think, you know, just a really good, really, really good game overall by Skimbo so far. I don't feel like Dubby has really played bad. Um, I just feel like ultimately Skimbo was able to get stops. Uh, Skimbo was able to get stops in this game. Um, and then he was also able to run the ball, which, you know, kind of surprising. But for Skimbo, uh, someone that's known as one of the best passers of all time, totally believe he is, to be running the ball in key situations. Um and, and really was was one of the keys to success here. I don't know why W did that. I mean, I know you're trying to save your clock, but in this game, there's no runoff if you go back to the huddle. So if you go back to the huddle and he comes out, it's a two minutes, 23. You're still going to have multiple plays. So I'm just not – because he costs himself like seven, eight yards. I don't know if that's worth two seconds. But I guess because you have to set up pass pro. There's a – play out of bounds As again W's kind of in that position where really have to conserve time but you have to score fast and so this means that you basically have to throw the ball this is what's really interesting you have to throw the ball over here you can't really throw the ball in this area of the field you have to play outside the numbers and because he has to play outside the numbers Skimbo knows that, and he's going to put coverages out there that are going to be good against stuff like that and switch stick accordingly. So there you see there's a coverage sack. Uh, he is going to get a playoff. But then also you still have to convert. You still have to move the ball. Like these all – all these factors here going for an aggressive catch. Skimbo gets the pick, and that is going to do it. Guys, I wanted to do a breakdown on this. These are, you know, two of the p pillars of the Madden community um, – Dubby's in the posture of shame. But seriously, GG's to both these guys, obviously, I mean, it's just incredible to watch these guys still being able to do it. I mean, these guys were basically, the, to a degree, the people that founded and started the MCS 10 years ago. And obviously, the MCS has consistently just been getting better every single year. And for Skimbo to make it back after five years, that is uh, it's a big deal. Um, super excited for him. So, anyways, that's going to do it for this little breakdown. Skimbo's basically one first down away. Uh, I think he'll probably just run the ball. He's not in a situation where he really needs to do anything. But I'll put links to both of their their uh, channels in the description if you guys want to go support them, you know, uh, obviously. And uh, I'm going to be rooting for Skimbo at the live. <laughs> uh, really want to see Skimbo win again. Uh, I think that would be super cool. And I just think he's – He's been right there so many times, and for him to finally get back to alive, you know, I just think I just think that's great for him. So, anyways, uh, thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed this little breakdown, and uh, go check both these guys out if you guys don't already uh, don't already follow them.